Hello, Rim to the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 238. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, everybody. We wanted to get back in the studio and, and for sure get another podcast in before the Feast of Dedication. Uh, we actually planned on doing it yesterday, didn't we, sweetheart? But uh, we had slick roads where we had some ice and uh, snow, and so we just wanted to wait till today to make sure that we came on good roads, and it That's was perfect right. this morning. Uh, so. I tell you what, four-wheel drive can handle snow, but all, all ice does is make all four wheels slide, so we just stayed home. And uh, this, uh, we're, we're excited. We felt like God had a word uh, for us to share today. Uh, before we get started, there are two things that I want to, uh, to bring up. Uh, next week, we have the Raising Up the Remnant Conference here in Missouri. Uh, really looking forward to that. We have a lot of great speakers coming in, and it's, it's more than just Bible teaching. There'll be stuff on homeschooling, uh, stuff on homesteading. And I'll confess, I know absolutely nothing about homesteading and, and how to be self-sufficient. And I, I, Mary, I think in the days ahead, we're going to need all of that. Oh, I'm looking forward to watching that. I think it's going to be so informative. And if you want more information on this conference, they're doing it both locally and they're going to have it on live stream. And uh, you can find that information at www.raisinguptheremnant.com. And uh, here the Watchman this year is going to be uh, in Dallas on March 5th through 8th, 2020. And uh, I think they're, they're doing some changes with it. We're not going to have as many speakers uh, to where there'll be more times of in-depth teaching, more times of fellowship. And uh, really looking forward to that. I'll be, it'll be good to see a lot of my colleagues and friends there as well as we have just so many partners and friends uh, that come to the Hear the Watchman conferences that I get to, to meet in. It, it, it's so exciting because, you know, it's like you, you, you see the names but when you can place faces to the names, it's so much more meaningful for me. And that's at www.hearthewatchman.com. And uh, we've got a lot of share today, and I want to uh, start off with, with Mary sharing the things that God has given her. And I'm just going to jump in uh, when, when the Holy Spirit leads me. How about that? Well, when, uh, you know, anytime we're approaching the Feast of Dedication, I always, I just love it uh, that we've been able to take some days off thank you guys for your patience and and uh, letting us have this time because we were just so exhausted and sometimes if we can just get a week to um, just really press into God and get to pray it just it helps so much and those are the times when when I'm able to to hear God clear and so you know I was I was just really looking at myself because I always take these times of year and, and dig deep and try to find all those places in my soul that need cleansing uh, because I always want to enter that feast um, with a lot of prayer and yeah. introspection so that I can I want to be a sanctified temple for the Holy Spirit. Well, that's actually what that feast teaches us for us to do that. And that, I think that's part of the rhythm of sanctification that are encoded into the feast to draw us closer to God so that every year we're closer than we were the year before. Well, that's right. You know, in this this year, it just looks like everything's going crazy. You you've, you guys have watched the news. You see all this stuff about impeachment and all these things. And it's I just I've never uh, ceases to amaze me how that you can have a set of facts and you can have all these things, but the narrative stays the same. And I I truly believe, guys, that this is because. These people are involved in the whole uh, agenda that has been set there for decades of how this nation was supposed to, to be controlled and led and to complete um, you know, a system to where the Christians are going to be out of the way and, and uh, this great kingdom of evil is supposed to thrive. And so... Um, well, and, and the great lakes that they will go to to, cr- to try to create something out of nothing. Uh, I read uh, the other day a, a guy that had been former in the Soviet Union that was able to get to America, get free and everything, and he said, this this is Stalin-esque. Mm-hmm. He said, he goes, I used to watch this in Russia. You know, Stalin would say, show me the man, and I'll create the crime. And that, right. that that's very communistic with the way that they're doing things. Well, and, and uh, I think that what we're getting ready to see is God's God's true light 
is going to take the facades off of what of these other lights, counterfeit lights that things that look one way, but he's going to peel that back because when his true light comes on the scene, you know, roaches scatter that's and er- right. everything is revealed. And I think that's, that's where we're headed. And I, I do think Mike, that we are um, dealing with that same spirit that was with Sennacherib. We've talked about that a lot because I get so excited because, you know, it just looked hopeless and God sent one angel and 185,000 of, of the enemies that were coming against God's people were destroyed. Just, oh, yeah. just and, one angel. And, you know, when I, I get excited, you know, they're, they're, you know, I always talk about the, the, the Christian TV becoming the Ronco channel where they promise seven angels. It only takes one. I, I was reading again through the book of Revelation uh, while we were on break, and one of the things that jumped out to me that I had never really noticed, when God brings down the super state of mystery Babylon in the book of Revelation, he didn't send an army of angels. He sent one. Mm. Yeah, all, all it takes yeah, is one to be one a game changer. Warring angel. That's right. Well, and I think that's um, that's what we're seeing play out in Washington. Is they're on that same agenda. They can't get off of it because that's all they know. You can see that they're they're faltering. You know, I've seen you know the I've seen some of them getting sick. I've seen some of them falling asleep, and it's it's indicative that that the power source is waning, that the, that they're losing that. You know, used to it was just like Sennacherib and his bunch. They they would be standing there saying and write letters even you know and bring them um, and say you know who do you think you are. No gods ever stopped us. None of these people's gods have ever stopped us. So you think your God can stop us? We're in that kind of a of a critical point yeah. to where God's getting ready to say, I've let it go, and I've let it go, and I've let it go. And I, I even think I know why there's been a delay in in this being revealed, and I'll, I'll share that in a little bit. But that's what we're seeing in Washington. We're They have never seen... God moved like this before, and they're just walking around like zombies. Yeah, and, and, and nobody's, just, nobody's and buying their BS anymore except those that have drank the Kool-Aid. Right, and so that's what we're seeing going on there. Um, and I wanted to I wanted to share with everybody something that, that I'm getting some insight on. I don't have all of it, uh, but I, I know that there was such an anointing when God gave me a prayer. And uh, so I wanted to share a little bit about that because I think that's that's part of what we're getting ready to see. Um, you may remember me mention on a podcast before, maybe a couple of them, on how in the past where I'd prayed for someone that was a program multiple, uh, and maybe at, at the time I didn't even know they were a program multiple, uh, but they would ask me for prayer because of this sickness or this or that. So when I would pray for them, and you've witnessed this too, whatever I was praying for them, if it was high blood pressure or back trouble, or whatever was going on with them, after I'd pray for them, it'd come to me. Yeah. And I and I, my blood pressure would start going up, and or my back would start hurting, and my back's been healed for many years, lower back that I, I had such problems with. And I just thought, how could that be? And, you know, I'd pray, and what, uh, what I felt like I, I needed to declare is that I'm not their burden bearer. And that Jesus bore burdens. And I don't know if that was something that they did to me years ago when I was young with programming to where I was I was prepared to hold the infirmities of the, the witches. I'm not sure how that went. But that's how I would, once I'd pray that and start praying over it, it would leave and I'd be fine. But it was it was confounding to me. I thought, how can that be that somebody can give you their infirmity, that they can give you their, you know, it was just so odd to me. Um so I want to explain a, a recent prayer that, that God gave me. But right before that, I want to read in Ezekiel because I think this is what we're getting ready to see right here. Um, and I mentioned this before, but I think this is the actual time when, when this is going to happen again in history. It's Ezekiel 13, uh, 18 through 23. It says, And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the women that sew pillows in all armholes, and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will you hunt the souls of my people, and will you save the souls alive that come unto you? And will you pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies? Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith you there hunt the souls to make them fly." 
and I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. Your kerchiefs also will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted, and ye shall know that I am the Lord." Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Therefore ye shall no more you shall see no more vanity, nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And that's a pretty powerful thing right there, Mike, because I, I think within that that talking about making souls fly, I think that includes even what we've um, heard where the witches are saying that they can pull uh, souls on the astral plane and that they can do all these things and that it affects the physical body and affects their soul. Um, and so I wanted to read the uh, the note out of my Bible under these, these scriptures, and it says, The use of such paraphernalia is attested in the magical practice from Babylonia. And what are we battling right now? Babylon. Yep. <laughs> this may refer to some function in black magic, but the exact meaning is unclear. The charms and veils are used by the sorceresses themselves, and to put an end to such practice, God will tear them off. Well, you know, one of the things that we had learned, and this was back when we had witches coming into our congregation and everything else, and we had to learn it through the School of Hard Knocks, uh, is to begin binding up people t- trying to ride in on top of the anointing uh, I remember uh, years ago we went down to a big conference and there was one particular minister we had questions about. And uh, so, you know, and, and I'm sitting up down front and it just rose up out of my spirit. God, everything from you I, that, that's from you I want, but I bind up anything else. And that dude gave me death stares the entire time. And uh, I think one of the things that, uh, that I have seen, it, you know, I do a lot of, we do a lot of Bible conferences and especially at the larger ones, uh, they can tend to blend in a little bit better. And so believers go in there with their hearts wide open, not realizing that there can be like fishing lines or mm-hmm. connections being done as they're as they're because their 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 hearts are open and we don't filter anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, that 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 at those conferences it's so important to say, Father, everything from you I want, but anything of the kingdom of darkness I I block it, I resist yeah. it, I refuse it, I reject it. Because I think that they can try to make connections to believers uh, to not only begin drawing the anointing, but also begin poisoning the well. Well, and we've been to conferences where the people, the speakers would gather and they'd just go through every line, laying hands on every person there. And so those are the, the kind of things, because this is this is what I've seen. Um, because I know the programming, because mine has unwound. I mean, like there were so many programs in me that would unwind and I could see them like the, uh, you know, I had the one woman that set my programming off one time and, and I didn't know I had in time programming or revelation, never had even heard of it at that point. But when she said this thing, what she actually had me take a word and uh, she was praying with somebody else and I was, I was watching to learn what was going on. And she had me take a particular word, um, and she had me assign a letter to it. And then then when I handed her that and she read that off, it set my programming off. And I heard internally, I heard the sixth seal has just opened. And when I said that to that person, if they'd known what they were doing, they would have said, well, we got to pray right now. Because I can tell you, if somebody said that to me, I'd be going, we got to pray right now because it's a serious thing when you open up those things. And she just lifted her hands and waved them back and forth, said hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. and you witnessed that. Yeah, um, we didn't understand the fullness of it at that moment. I, God was able to show me later, and my back parts actually told you what she did. And then we confirmed it in research, right? And so, but but I mean, I didn't even know what was going on. But here's what's dangerous: um, is obviously since I had been in churches in my life, I think that they had planned on me being in churches, and we're going to use something within me. Um, probably to work against the church or whatever. I mean, there, there's a reason when they put this stuff in there. And so mine, my, um, you know, God was letting me see what the, what the uh, programming was. Well, there was, there was all kinds of stuff. Um, there was like um, a time when I had a program that was where I was to meet one of the presidents. Now, I don't think any of that happened. I think my stuff got so waylaid that I don't, but the, but the programming was there for me to move in that pattern. And I'll never forget when that when that programming was was un, 
rolling or whatever that was in my mind. I could hear how it was supposed to go. I was staying in complete reality, but in my head I could see what this was. And one of the triggers for that was the eagle has landed. Mm-hmm. And so anytime we're going to mention a, a scripture later about eagles, so I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over everybody listens ears, that if there's anything that's been defiled about that scripture and maybe mentioned and an eagle opens it up, we ask that the blood of Jesus would go yes. and deliver them from anything, that any control there. <laughs> well, I think one of the most dastardly things I've seen with programming is they use so much scripture. They'll use uh, either revelation programming, right. they'll use Hebraic, the, the, you know, the, the tribe of Judah, and it, it's, right. it's a false Hebrew. Well, they, they use, like that woman did with the, assigning a letter to the alphabet, a lot of these powerful, powerful witches use Kabbalistic magic. Mm-hmm. And they put they have to use scripture. In, yeah. They use it with that. And that's why a lot of times when I hear preachers say things, I'm thinking, God, I don't know if this is you or I don't know if they're programmed because they'll be saying the same things that were in my end time programming. Yeah. The the all Everything in the end time was there. The, the bowls, the... Uh, you know the seals, uh, the the horsemen were there. The woman that the that the earth helps. I just I could just go on and on with all this stuff that was in my head. Somebody put that there, yeah. you know. And what exactly it's supposed to do, I don't know. But I uh, I know that there were so many things connected to in times like, um, well, wormwood was there, and 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 remember I I had that experience where yeah, I was with the yeah. the other two women, and we were supposed to, we went in a pod. And were to destroy the asteroid, and then then it was in conjunction with that meteor shower that happens every August. And my dog started barking. I walked outside and I looked up and saw that meteor shower, and I thought, "Well, I just I really did blow the asteroid." I mean, it's so bizarre because, yeah. it, and and I don't know if God does that with other people that way, but He let me be conscious as all of this was unfolding. I think so. I could could warn people. You may think you're hearing from God, but what if it's what if it's this programming like I had in me? Exactly. You know, it's something to take a look at and pray over is what I'm saying. Uh, because that, that's the reason I, I say a lot of what I do. Because, because, Mike, if people start having this programming interrupted, and let's say things, well, they are. We're seeing it right now. We're seeing Washington just go nuts. We're seeing, you know, I've, I've heard from so many people that they're, they've had – a member in their family that they believe is a victim of some program multiple that has has been assigned to them. Um, and once you get that established, it's almost impossible to turn around. Yeah. I mean, it takes a miracle working power of God to restore the body. Sometimes the body gets so attacked that it, it takes creative miracles to get you back. And a lot of times those people die and that's so sad and so grievous. But but it's one of the things, the reasons that I say so much of what I do is because even today, with this today, God is getting ready to judge something. Exactly. Now, as he starts judging this occult stuff, there won't be, he's just going to sit back. Even if he comes to the point and he says, I'm not going to be able to use the United States like I planned. He knows how to hurt the heart of God. And how he'll do that is he'll attack every person that has a door. That's why we mention so many things. It's not because we're trying to, you know, have some big theological debate going on or anything. It's not that. It's simply me saying, I've seen these things with my eyes, guys. I've seen these people. You would not believe the power that is with some of these program multiples that are in the churches. The reason is, is because they joined them. It's not just like, you know, if somebody came in your church and let's say they were into Satanism or witchcraft or something like that, um, your basic prayers are going to, or would be able to stop those things. But what you're looking at is Satan knew how to formulate things so that they could stay in existence because of the mercy of God. And I'll explain to you how they do that. And I think they do this all the time. Remember uh, years ago I, I told you about how some of the witches that I dealt with used their children as shields. Yeah, They have the child send, send the, the curse or whatever, hand you a curse item or something, so that if, if you catch it, if you pray and it goes back, then it will hit the child and not them. And we learned the Lord... Send it if, if if this goes back. Send it back to the originator, not yeah, to the carrier. Because because then you can protect the little children yeah. like that. But when they were doing these conglomerations of attack modes, they would take a hexagram, a pentagram. They would put people on the points of those, 
to form a conglomeration. Mm -hmm. It's not just one person coming at you. It will be six. It will be five. And guess what they put in those conglomerations in all these configurations? They put children, innocent children that are just part of the conglomeration. They've done it uh, with, you know, former people in in the White House. Yeah, they have. (laughs) And that's how I, I witnessed this, Mike. I witnessed God pull something instead of it going the other way. I saw God pull the thing on that that thing through one of the innocent people. Well, then I think that's also when they try to connect them to more of a principality than a, well, a demon. Well, that's what I was getting ready to tell you. This is not just the power because one person can't hold those huge demons. and th- no. they, they can't hold the power of that. So they have to use a conglomeration. And so when you have... So let's say they send one of those people into a congregation. You're not just having one person that's got a back personality that's a witch come in there. You're having the whole conglomeration of what they're connected to. Well, absolutely. And if, even if they just do a basic coven, there'll be 12 other people connected to that one coming in because they'll, they'll do 13. And, uh, and then what Satan did is because he knew how much God loves the innocent and will yep. protect the innocent, they put children in there. So God's hand would not judge it because that same, the same thing that's going to come back on those people that are sending that, including – and these are not all program multiples on these. They'll have some innocent there that, that were taken as children and programmed, but then they have people that know full well what they are. They are high-level sorceresses. And, and so instead – so they use these children to once again block their judgment. This is what I believe this is to talk about in Ezekiel. It is. And, you know, we found out with multiples that the that the presenting part is the wounded sparrow. While you have a very high ranking, mm-hmm. uh, Rush Dizdar's had to deal with this so many times. That is that is an adept in, in ocean mm-hmm. magic and these different things. That's why when you pray for them, uh, people have had, you know, the, the person praying ends up with bloody nose, with migraines, all, all just all kinds of things, because there's this warring from the back that you may not even be realizing that's going on. Right. And and that's that's one of the things that I, I believe, you know, I know people have been so discouraged and they've seen family members even die from these attacks. And, and I think that they just, you know, they're saying, I said every prayer that could be prayed. And boy, I believe them. I believe they were fighting yep. so hard. But once those things hit, Mike, that's why I try so hard to get people to see what the doors are, if they can close those doors. Because once those things hit from that high level of power, this isn't just like, like I was saying, one witch doing a spell, something like that. This is a conglomeration that brings the power of an attack from these high-level beings. And so it's not easy to overcome those. No, it's not. And can I, can I share a quick one of the things we learned that when we pray for people and, and uh, show you an illustration? Uh, because we, we saw that when we pray for people, stuff would come back. And so m- one of the things that I constantly do when I pray for people, especially if I'm laying on of hands, is, Lord, fulfill your word in their lives. And we were up in Long Island, and it was when uh, Russ Dizdar wasn't able to come, and Mike and I filled in. So at the end, we had prayer. Uh, Pastor Casper and others came up. And so I had this huge line of people. And regardless of what they asked me to pray for, God, let Jesus be glorified, fulfill your word in their lives. And, you know, that we had already, I'd already taken off the mic to where you had to be like, you know, five or six people away to hear me. And there were several people in line when they got close enough to hear what I was praying, jumped out of line and left. Mm -hmm. And so I I knew there were witches there because that kind of prayer would have came back on their heads with with great power. Well, I've never seen as many witches as I saw in Branson when I was there. Um, That's got to be one of the biggest hubs. (laughs) Well, when you you start dealing with aliens, when you start dealing uh, with uh, the Nephilim Mm -hmm. and stuff, you see those are their gods. And so they'll, they'll be right mm-hmm. in on that because they don't want the knowledge that they have maintained yeah. since antiquity to begin to be revealed. They want to keep Christians ignorant. Right. Well, and that's, that's their mode of attack is because, because they know they've been trained in what throughout the ages are weak areas. And, yeah. and they know what, what is pagan. We've been out of the loop. You know, and, and I understand like how preachers have always said, we're just going to look, well, it's, it was a trigger that they said to me, but look at the light. You just keep your eyes on, on God and the word and things like that. Well, and that's, that's a very important that we do that. But if we don't know these things 
that they can do these things, look how many needless casualties have happened because yeah. they've just not known, you know, like like um, there's been services we've been in and the pastor will say, just lay your hands on the person next to you and pray with without knowing that there's transfer of spirits and you don't want to just lay hands on somebody real quick. And, say, you know, those are the type of things you can get yourself in trouble and you don't even know it. Every, we're all, we've all been taught for decades now just, you know, just show the love of Jesus, and, and Jesus will forgive everything. And, and that is true. His love is so powerful, and I'm all, I all behind that, t- teaching the love of Jesus and how powerful that is and forgiveness. But, but they le- it's just half there. They, they don't teach you about the power of God's judgment. They don't, and, they don't teach you the power of the enemy. That you know, The Apostle Paul in so many places said, I would not have you be ignorant of the enemy's devices. Right. And these were people that had come out of paganism. They knew right. uh, exactly what he was talking about, or that, or that it's our duty to expose the darkness. Right. And and they look, so we, 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 we have got to be, you know, 70%, okay, this, this is the kingdom of God, but 30% is, okay, listen, this is what the enemy can do. Here is how you use the kingdom to put a stop to it. Because any time that God moves, they want to destroy that movement. They want to contaminate that movement, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, the you know, like the charismatic movement, uh, being being filled with the Holy Spirit and the power of the kingdom or teaching on kingdom or, or Hebraic heritage or whatever, if, if they can sense that God's beginning to move, their duty because they don't want mm-hmm. the giant of the body of Christ waking up, and right. then, and they they will labor to to bring spiritual slumber and to and to take out the leadership. That's why we have to. We, that's why we have to be so in prayer and and keep things yeah. covered in prayer and understand their tactics so that the Holy Spirit can show us right. ways like He did you of putting a stop to it. Well, and you know I've always sensed. I can always sense when they're, especially over you, I think because of the importance of what's gonna, what God's going to share through you in teaching, there will always be like a swarm that comes, and I sense it coming. And it will be like a witchcraft swarm. And it will be, okay, God will, or um, not God, the enemy will take one person and punch a button here. Then he'll take a person and punch a button here. And they'll all end up here at the same time. It's just like, you know, a whole bunch of attacks at one time to discourage you, to try to, to put something on you, to, that kind of thing. And I've watched it over and over. And by the grace of God, he shows us usually ahead of time so we can be prepared. We start recognizing it, and we can start rebuking it. Yeah. Uh, but that's it. They've, they've got so... Um, I think they've just almost just sit back because they have destroyed so many people and people don't even know what's going on because that's it's a whole lot different, like I said, than a witch, you know, being someplace sending a little curse to you. Then that can be bad enough. Yeah. Well, but know, this is this these are called conglomerations. That's what my word is for it, because it's a whole bunch of stuff using a, a power source to come at you. You know, when you look at the uh, the uh, I've been doing some some writing on, on Ephesus and the history of it, and you have Artemis that became Diana. And Artemis's original symbol were bees. Mm. And I think it was because with, with female goddess, they teach you how to swarm. Swarm, yeah. And I so that, that. That, that falls right in line exactly with what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I, I believe it. I believe there's swarms that are coming at us. Um, well, and I want to, to tell you a word that God recently gave me. Um, and, and I think it might have been even in, you know, as I was praying about God, there's so many things that they, they do, and I don't know how they get it done. Um, and so what, what the word I heard was tap line. Um, and what he told me to do is he said, ask forgiveness for the sins that have created these tap lines and take the sword of the Spirit and sever them in the name of Jesus. And Mike, I said that prayer, and the minute I did, it was like I saw this big hose severed and it was under so much pressure it was just whipping around you know like a like something that's that's under so much pressure like a hose that just flips back and forth um and i thought boy this thing has been powerful whatever it was and um so i after that i noticed i started feeling better Mm -hmm. you know and i i tried to find out anything i could about a tap line and uh, strangely enough because i believe that um so many of the uh, oil deals and things in the Middle East and different things were connected uh, to the pedophiles and using the little children actually as some of the payment for those deals. Yeah. 
And one of the th- one of the things that it pops up when you go on the internet is the original uh, big oil line that was made back in the forties uh, that <laughs> that, that created the wealth in the Saudi Middle East. Yeah. Saudi Arabian oil, and it, it's called Tapline. I thought, well, that that could be a part of this because I think that I mean you'd have to think that even maybe the magic. And, and witchcraft that could have been involved in some of the things that the Luciferian elite have done through the years, that may have included those children and, and that, that magic that they were a part of. And, and so see how they would use that to hold back judgment on these evil deeds. See how, because they would know, now God, if you judge us for what we're doing, all these little innocent children are going to go to. Yep. You see how this evil this is? You know, as we were talking about and preparing this too, I was thinking about the agreements that our nation and other nations have made with uh, with the fallen angels, the, the watchers mm-hmm. as they were coming back, and, and how twisted in with their technologies is absolutely all this darkness that they're entwining. Uh, you, can, you can see uh, since... Uh, the beginning of the 20th century with this technological explosion that we have degraded intellectually. We have degraded morally. Well, at the same time, uh, we're, we're developing such technologies that we lack the morality to properly handle them mm-hmm. because there's, there's a level of darkness that's coming. We, we got to be careful with what we allow to begin intertwining into our lives. Nations need to do that. Right. Uh, governments need to do that. And we as individuals, we need to do that. Well, sweetheart, we're already entangled in this. Oh, yeah. That's what God is doing is he's untangling us from Babylonian practices that we've not even known. And so um, I, I am supposed to, to speak a word over this today. Um, and then I wanted you to talk about um, Isaiah, that where we were discussing the scripture in Isaiah. Um, but what God wanted me to do is to pray over the nation. And Father, I ask right now that you would forgive the sins that have formed these evil tap lines that are drawing the life out of those that are supposed to be used by you, that are sending their infirmity, the judgment that's upon them to the people to carry their burdens. Yes. We ask you to forgive those sins. We take the sword of the Spirit, and we sever every tap line across this nation. We sever them by the sword of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. We command everything to go back to those that are the originators of it, that every innocent person be released from their captivity. I loose the judgment of God on this wickedness. I loose it over this nation to destroy the works of wickedness that have held God's people captive. And just as in the days of Ezekiel, Father, rip these things off their shoulders of every yes. sorceress, of every sorcerer, everyone that is behind this great evil, Father, that is has uh, used the innocent to hold back your judgment. We declare a reversal right now. I declare in the name of Jesus that every captive is going to be set free. I declare that the judgment will go to where the judgment belongs yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes, in Jesus' name. Father, separate the wheat from the tares so that the tares can be judged in this day and this hour, we ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And as we were, um, we were talking about all these things this week and uh, different things that we'd listen to. And we, we came to the um, scripture about uh, in Isaiah forty thirty one It says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And if there was ever a time we all need to be renewed, Father, yeah. Father it's now. It and is. we ask for that strength to come. And um, I was going to ask you to talk about the word wait it doesn't just mean sitting around waiting on god like you know just sitting there waiting for something it's it's got a lot more meaning doesn't it it does the the hebrew language is very uh it's designed to get you to ask questions it's designed to paint pictures within your mind and uh, this particular word is mikra which is actually the same root word is used in mikvah or to baptize because those that baptize is because they have already been intertwined with god and uh, it paints a picture, probably one of the clearest pictures uh, for those that are with the, that understand our Hebraic heritage. When you when you get a prayer shawl, uh, there are there are zitzi on the bottom of it, and a true one has a blue cord 
that as you begin to tie the knots and if you have and it's it's tedious work uh, in fact i remember i got i had gotten one that was heirloom quality and uh, but it didn't come with the blue cord and we took that off and while i was at a conference i downloaded instructions because there's several ways to tie it the knots are the same but just the technique is different and one, one of the things i thought was fascinating is when when mary had finished with that it, it actually became almost like a double helix spiral that almost looked like dna uh, and, and the way that that particular, I, I can't remember if it was Ashkenazi or which way that it, that it was the 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 the, uh, the tying, but when you when you look at it, the blue cord represents Messiah. Uh, when you do the blue cord plus the and the, all the cords together plus the knots, you have six hundred thirteen, which are the number of commandments or mitzvot uh, within within uh, uh, the Torah. But at the same time, when you when you do the knots, it literally spells yod he vav he, and see that that is something that is very tedious to do. It's not something that you would uh, just do quickly. Uh, it, it's time consuming. It paints the same picture. We the 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 entwining, and I, I prefer with God entwining rather than entanglement because sometimes entanglement can become um, accidentally. That's how the enemy uses it. They try to throw a net so that we get tangled in it. This is purposeful. Those that take the time through prayer, through fasting, through devotion, that begin to intertwine themselves around that blue cord Messiah. There, there's something happens. The more that I am intertwined with him, the more of his strength can begin flowing to me. And you know what? what's interesting when you when you see a, a real zitzi, every single knot, every single uh, every single of that working, you'll always find the blue cord. So that no matter, and it, it represents our life that no matter where the enemy tries to get in, he finds that Jesus is already there. And see that that's that's the the, the power of um, of even the feast when we begin celebrating the feast. We're not adopting ancient things that we can easily go back and say they were pagan origin and we disliked them and so we adopted them. No, these were ones that Almighty God gave because it was a part of him saying uh, there are special times in the year you need to remember what I have done so you're prepared for what I'm going to do. And in their observance, especially since the cross, when we make them Jesus-centric, they are times of us intertwining. And one of the things I like about Hanukkah is it's, it takes time for me to examine to make sure that there's nothing else trying to get entangled with my intertwining. You know, if you have ever had, uh, you know, a, a basketball net, any kind of net or anything, and it's outside, and one of the most frustrating things in the world is you'll, you'll get sticks and twigs and all kinds of stuff caught up into it. You see, that, that's, in, that's the enemy trying to steal and trying to corrupt what God is doing. And so there are Passover and, and this time of the year, of the year, as well as even the fall of the 10 days of all, looking to make sure uh, in, in the fall, it's, it'll make sure that I'm right with God and man and I don't have unforgiveness and I don't have these things. In, in the, the spring, you're looking to get all the leaven out of your house spiritually. This time of year, you're looking specifically for Hellenism, the mystery religions, to make sure that they haven't creeped in, that they're not trying to get snagged in on even the very things that God's doing in your life. You don't want the enemy getting snagged in there and trying to corrupt what God is doing because the greatest threat to the enemy is for you to become a straight arrow in the hand of God. That, that he can't get you off so that when God shoots you from his bow, he know that, that there's nothing to pull you off course, that you're going to strike exactly where you're going to strike, that you're, you're online with God and that there's nothing there that would cause you to get off one iota. Uh, one of the things that I, I have written and, and tried to hint on both my books, Lucifer, when he fell, he was the anointed cherub that covers. And most ministers have really not taken the time to think that through. He was able to hover. He was the canopy over the throne of God, that he had the ability to hover over the top of the fully manifested presence of God. And he has an anointing to do that. And if we're not careful, this this entanglement by not examining what we're supposed to do. You see, you see, if you ever entwine something, if you ever are knitting that together, 
you, you're going over every single piece of the of the cords as you do it to make sure that there's no there's no contamination, there's no nothing because you want to keep it pure because it's something you're investing your time in, and and you wanted to make sure that it's unto the Lord and it's something beautiful for Him. And so that that's why we begin we begin examining to make sure the enemy doesn't try to throw stuff at us and to, and to get us to accept things that are not of, of God because it contaminates this intertwining. And so as we, we examine it during Hanukkah, we we we, we strip that other garbage mm-hmm. off and we rededicate our entwining with God. Father, let it be pure. I, I'm driving out because when you when you look at Hanukkah, they first drove out. Then they cleansed, and then they rededicated. Mm-hmm. And that's the time we're in because as we drive out, we disconnect those tap lines. As we cleanse, if there was any venom or poison or toxin that was brought our way while they were trying to steal the anointing, steal life or whatever, we're getting rid of that. That's it. And now that it has been, you have driven out and you have cleansed, then you're ready to rededicate. Right. And we seal off those lines that they would have to us. Yes. Through things we've done that we didn't even know were wrong. Oh, absolutely. Uh, our Western society is replete with pagan things. I, I know here in Missouri they took uh, on the top of, of our Capitol Dome. Now they, 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 now they say separation of church and state. And if somebody would have put a cross on our Capitol Dome, half of America would have had strokes. I mean, it's, it, but but now if you put a pagan goddess, Circe, up yeah. there, oh, it's just fine. We actually had, there was a lawsuit that some of our representatives done saying, that that's a false god. Yeah, we shouldn't it, have it, it up should, there. We shouldn't have it up there. Of course, it was, you know, it's like the state is saying, well, we just spent $300,000 having her repaired. Well, and we're I don't know how much up. it was, but I, I know it was probably a lot. They said that it had been struck by lightning over hundreds 30, of times. Yeah, over and 300 so times. That's probably, not, of course, it's kind of like a lightning rod stuck up there um but i i we really had some grace period i you know when i heard that was being taken down i thought okay god we're not going to have that thing sitting up there so and i've seen a lot of advancements good advancements positive things in our state when it wasn't there so now that it's back up there we've got to pray over it again but but i'm seeing i'm seeing people start to see things you know, their eyes are becoming open. And like like I said that God said in 2020, 2020 vision, you know, like that we'll, um, that people are, are going to be able to see. And I think they're already, they're starting to, because I think America, if you, if you ask people that are not just totally caught up in Babylon, yeah, they're going to see, you know, this, this stuff's crazy going on. <laughs> it really is. It's not hard to see now. It used to, yeah. you know, it was so cloaked and it's not that hard to see. No, it's not. And I, I thought what was funny, the one of the things they brought up about the Circe on the Capitol Dome, they put her up there in the early 1900s or the early 20th century. And uh, so she's uh, been up there since, I think, 32, maybe 20, 1928, something like I that. I can't remember the date. Uh, but they, they, they put her facing the wrong way, so maybe she was in reverse that entire time. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but uh, th- that's something for us that are in Missouri to begin praying mm-hmm. against. But, I mean, it, it's universal. You can go to Capitol Capitol because they yeah, were mimicking what yeah. the Freemasons were doing in Washington, D.C. And, uh, guys, we, we need to understand that ever since uh, the founding of our nation, there were, there were two veins. There was the godly vein and there was the mystery religion vein. And, uh, but what they don't know is that the first ones over, the, the pilgrims and the Puritans, dedicated this land to God in fact, I have documents in my library that some of the very, 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 very first ones to make it over said that the law of God, Moses, would be the law of the land. And so, you know, there's, there's a principle Freemasons love to use, especially with uh, the skull and bones, is they'll have the very first, whether it's the American Historical Society or whatever, the very first president will be one of their skull and bones members because he sets the pace, he sets the direction, which will live out through that entire organization. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things I'm standing on is one of the first ones that came over from Europe said, dedicated this land to Jesus yes. and said that the law of Moses would be the law of the land. Mm-hmm. And so I'm saying, you know what? I think, that preempts, <laughs> I think that preempts what the Masons are trying to yeah. do. And There's for a us, destiny from God for yes. this place. And, it, and that's one of the reasons I believe Satan was going to use this nation to usher in the Antichrist. That's my opinion, yeah. um, based and on things I've seen. And I think that that's why my warnings went out so many times is I'm sure he's starting to see 
I mean, he's getting pr- probably pretty close to seeing this is a failed mission on his part, and he will go berserk over this because this was his ace in the hole, I believe. Yeah, he's trying to divert the prophecies of God. Mm-hmm. If he can get mm-hmm. even one, well, just and- one, to be different. Think how many yeah. how how he sit and watch this just play out. Yeah. No hindrances. No, you know, just play right out until Hillary didn't get in. Yeah. And then everything. That's when everything started going wacko. So we're going to see God's plan. He's going to raise up His people. He's going to free us out of Babylon. Yes. You know, there there had to be some people that would pray um, ahead of time for things just like this. You know, there's there's lots of times when. Uh, I've thought about well, God, can we just can we just loose your judgment and and I'd I would get a check? No, not yet, not yet. Can't we just bind up this and then loose loose? And I think I had to have that piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Well, there's there's this revelation. There's always perfect timing in the kingdom of God. Well, God doesn't want the innocent to go with the wicked. Yeah. And I mean, there when I'm saying loose judgment on wicked, Mike, these are uh, reprobate minds. Yes. These are not people that could be saved. They are people so far gone, so far evil, as in the days of Noah, that there's no getting them back. I don't even think there's a person there. I think they've given themselves totally over to these entities. Yes. And so I believe that it's going to rock and roll, and we're going to be, like I said the other day, this is the time when you run just as fast like Aaron ran with that sensor to try to, to stay back everything off the people because now this is when the doors will be a problem. Absolutely. And Father, just as we spend this time of Hanukkah, cleansing the temple, cleansing first, driving out the pagan, driving out the Hellenism, and then cleansing our lives of these things so that we can rededicate. Father, I ask that heaven would move right now. Father, that you would drive out the wickedness, that you would cleanse it from our land so that you could rededicate your destiny for this nation, Father, in the earth and that you would use it for your glory, that we would have a place that we would be free to worship you in spirit and in truth and to proclaim your truth unhindered by social pressure or political pressure. Father, and we ask you for it today. Help us, Father. In Jesus' Jesus name. Have you felt a stirring that life as you know it is an unsustainable thing? Is it occurring to you that modern America lives very differently to the way our Creator may have designed life and intended for it to be? Many agree there is an urgency for the last day's remnant to go back to the old way of doing things, but very few know where to start. It can all be very overwhelming. This is why we are planning a gathering to help overcoming believers to acknowledge and respond to Yahweh's promptings to strengthen our lives, to remember our true identity, even while living among the nations. When we cast off the ways of the world, a deeper understanding and love for Father's Word will grow within us and our children. Experience authentic festivity this December 26th through 29th at the Raising Up the Remnant Conference. Receive encouragement and instruction from speakers like Barbara Klicka, Brennan Falks, Braden and Tali Waller, Dr. Michael Lake, Stephen Mutria, Tom Stapleton and more. Come away with a firm understanding of the high calling for the remnant in these last days. Taking place at the beautiful Trout Lodge in Potosi, Missouri, this scenic getaway will be an experience to remember. Biblically clean and Sabbath-friendly meals are included with every on-site lodging reservation. This event will capture the fellowship and energy of a conference and also include all the memory-making and beauty of a vacation. You'll want to spend the season this way every year. So for more information and to register, go to RaisingUpTheRemnant.com. Power